Welcome to Longing, Waiting, Believing, our Advent Bible study for the 18th of December. I've fiddled around with the microphone volume and hopefully my speech is a bit clearer now. Do let me know if it's better, worse, indifferent. Today's study is entitled Death Defeated. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must be put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. Death is a taboo subject in much of today's society. We're far more shielded from it than in past generations. Our average life expectancy is much greater than in the past, and unless they die in distant war zones or natural disasters, people tend to die in the sanitised surroundings of a hospital. So we don't tend to see death at first hand except when perhaps sitting with a loved one who passes away on a hospital bed. And I'm very conscious that that has changed now during COVID. And we do pray for those who mourn and have not been able to say goodbye to their loved ones. Death is something that frightens people, and perhaps that is why they don't talk about it. These days there's much less certainty about death, any kind of afterlife, and therefore more people see death as just it, the end. In the Old Testament, death is a natural end of life, and only really to be regretted if it's premature. So it's a great blessing to die full of years, and that expression is used in Genesis 25a and in many other places. There's very little hint of a resurrection, the first clear instance being in Daniel 12.2, which is very late, having been written during the Maccabean period, which is the second century before Christ. Instead, the Old Testament speaks of Sheol, the rather bleak place of the dead. The word is translated into Greek as Hades, familiar from classical literature, as the realm of the shades of the departed. In some passages it denotes abandonment by God to a place of corruption, Although elsewhere we find that God can be present even there. Have a look at Psalm 139 verse 8. In the light of Christ's death and resurrection, death is completely transformed. It's not something to be feared. It's the gateway from the perishable nature of our present existence to the imperishable. From the mortal to immortality. When we say in the creed, he descended into hell, Hades, we are affirming that Christ went there on our behalf. He suffered our death so that we may pass from death to his resurrection life in the twinkling of an eye. Today's passage is not sentimental about death. However, it does not say death is nothing at all, as is so commonly read at funerals these days. No, death is real, and it brings great grief to those who mourn. Earlier in this chapter, Paul calls it the last enemy to be destroyed. Using Old Testament quotations to make this point, Paul taunts defeated death. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Paul st says that the sting of death is sin, which makes death much more dreadful than it otherwise would be. Sin is what makes death something to be feared. Will death mean judgment and facing the consequences of being found wanting? Or will it mean forgiveness and a new hope and joy? Even if we anticipate the latter, death can also bring regrets and feelings of guilt. 
Have I wasted my life? Have I harmed others? Are there people I've not reconciled with? Have I loved and been loved? Or have I detached myself from the commitment that love requires? For fear of being hurt. The 2007 film The Bucket List is a moving portrayal of two dying men who compile lists of things that they want to do before they die. Through their experience of ticking off items on their bucket lists, each discovers the most important thing he needs to learn. One, that he loves his wife. The other, that he should be reconciled with his daughter. In addition, Paul tells us that the power of sin is the law. To understand this, we need to refer to his teaching about the law in Romans 7. The law is holy, good, spiritual, but it shows up sin for what it is. For example, Paul would not have known what it meant to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. Thus the law sharpens our sense of moral culpability and as we face death, it makes our sense of failure and regret that much greater. But in today's passage, Paul shows us that we can rejoice because Jesus has conquered sin and death and we can declare triumphantly, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Does the hope of the resurrection mean that we are to neglect the world? Far from it. Paul tells us that, that in the light of Christ's victory, we should be always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. For Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Christian hope of the resurrection certainly doesn't absolve the Christian from concern for this world. Rather, it sends a man back to his life on earth in a wholly new way. This means that the Christian has to face earthly tasks and difficulties head on, because only in his doing so is the crucified and risen Lord with him, and he then crucified and risen with Christ. Bonhoeffer undoubtedly drank his own earthly tasks to the dregs. Executed for his part in the German resistance movement, his last recorded words on being led to the scaffold were, full of tremendous hope. This is the end. For me, the beginning of life. And so for reflection, reading from Mr Valiant for the Truth in John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress. Then said he, I am going to my father's, and though with great difficulty I am go hither, yet now I am not repent me of all the trouble I have been asked to arrive where I am. My sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage, and my courage and skill to him that can get it. My marks and scars I carry with me to be a witness for me that I have fought his battles and now will be my rewarder. When the day that, has, that he must go hence was come, many accompanied him to the riverside, in which, as he went in, he said, Death, where is thy sting? And as we went down deeper, he said, Grave, where is thy victory? So he passed over, and all the trumpets sounded for him on the other side. God bless.